Hello students, welcome to Year 11 Biology and Module 4, Ecosystem Dynamics. This is video number 7, and we're going to have a bit of a focus on Aboriginal rock painting. In this second component of our Ecosystem Dynamics module, we're going to be looking at past ecosystems and some of the evidence that's used to tell us about um, what was happening in the past. This is the first in three areas of paleontological and geological evidence that we're going to be looking at specifically to provide evidence of past um, changes in environments. And in this particular video, we're going to focus on Aboriginal rock painting. In terms of success criteria, so um, what you need to do in order to, or at least the, the kind of the key takeaways from this video and what we'll extend in class, is that you need to link Aboriginal rock paintings to past environments. You may, you should be able to draw some conclusions about past environments from specific Aboriginal rock paintings, and you may even be able to use Aboriginal rock paintings to discuss evidence for the changing climate in Australia. Hopefully too, we'll be able to look at some of the abiotic interactions and see how they too may have changed um, on the basis of what's being depicted in Aboriginal rock art. So then, before we get into Aboriginal rock art, let's look at ecological principle number six. And we've been collecting a number of ecological principles as we've gone through our ecosystem dynamics module. Assemblages are not discrete, but grade continuously in space and time, and species groups are not consistent from place to place. Assemblages can be classified into communities, but this classification is for convenience and not a description of the fundamental structure of nature. As we've talked about previously, the problem with ecology is we need to kind of box it up a little bit for us to study it. Now, there's nowhere that's more uh, boxed in a sense when we're looking at uh, ecology than in the past. We don't have all the information. We only have certain pieces of evidence and we need to be able to try and work out from the evidence that we do have what um, what animals were present, what plants were present, and from the plants, whether or not we can make inferences about the um, abiotic factors, some aspects of the climate, the rainfall, temperature, all of those sorts of things. So remember that to keep those things in mind when we're trying to look at how uh, evidence from these important areas, particularly uh, Aboriginal rock paintings, can tell us something about past environments. So this is going to be the first of three videos, in fact, where we're going to focus on some of the areas of evidence for past environments. Rock paintings is the first one, which we'll be having a look at in this video, but we're also going to look at geological evidence and also ice core drilling, all three of which provide us with a little bit of information about the nature of past ecosystems, their climates, their abiotic components, as well as the organisms that were living at that time. So what is it about Aboriginal rock art that's important for scientists and ecologists in particular? Well, there's, I guess there's a couple of important things that are part of um, what we can gain from um, Aboriginal rock paintings. We know that the culture is an oral culture. It's one that passes down a lot of the important stories from generation to generation through storytelling, but it's also one that passes on a lot of information through art. And this is something that we've been able to examine and study uh, on, the, on the basis that it gives us information about overlapping time frames. Sometimes it gives us some information about absolute time frames, and that does involve the use of things like radiometric dating, where we can actually specifically date some of the artworks that we see. But we also know that there's different types of artwork, and those different types of artwork can um, vary on the basis of the content. So particularly if there's a lot of humans, for example, there's a lot of humans depicted in the Bradshaw paintings. In fact, there's a little bit of controversy around that, which I won't look at now, but which we will look at in class. Um, the Wanjina paintings is a really important group as well. And from the Wanjina paintings, we've started to get an idea that of, of that overlap between humans and the megafauna. How much overlap was there? How far back, uh, how old are some of these uh, rock paintings? What sort of organisms are present? One of the things that's um, being suggested um, is the presence of a large bird like Genyornis. 
uh, a large bird that has been um, associated with the Australian megafauna that is now extinct. And yet it's possible that there may well be depictions of Genuinus and other uh, components of the Australian megafauna uh, as part of Aboriginal rock paintings. This is really important because it tells us firstly that, that obviously humans existed uh, at the same time as some of the megafauna. And we did talk previously about um, extinction events and to what extent humans may or may not have played a part. Now, had they not overlapped in time, there's no way humans could have played a part in the extinction. Um, but the fact that they existed, and particularly if they've existed, coexisted for some period of time, it also suggests that it wasn't the presence, the mere presence of humans that actually put pressure on some of these very large organisms. Most importantly, when we're looking at Aboriginal rock paintings, what we can see is that the types and the numbers of animals depicted in the paintings change over time. And the change over time is something that gives us information about past ecosystems. It allows us to make conclusions about the ecological relationships that we see between the organisms that are represented in those paintings and it also tells us something about how the climate may have changed uh, over time as well. Now, it's easier to talk about this. It's, it's more important that we actually have a look at some examples. So we'll give you a chance in class to have a look at some specific examples of Aboriginal rock art and what sort of conclusions we can make about those past environments from each sample. But that's going to have to wait for the class. Thanks very much for watching.